Good evening. Praise God, brethren. This is yet another evening that we are listening to the word of the Lord. My names are Miriam Wabui Wakahoro, and I love Christ as my Savior. This evening, I really thank God that he has kept me safe. Even after what we've been going through over the months, the Lord has taken care of me. He has taken care of my family. Uh, let me take this opportunity to thank God the Almighty for giving me this day, for giving me this opportunity to share his word with you. At the same time, I would like to thank the church leadership of Nairobi West Parish, headed by our Leverad, Reverend Festa Zigetonga. And at the same time, the communication team that is doing a lot of, a lot of work over this season. I would also like to thank the pastoral team of this church, the communication team, and all who are tirelessly working with the church so that our brethren all over can be blessed by the Lord. Uh, this evening, I would also like to thank the members of my family who have given me a lot of support, not necessarily during the COVID season, but all the time that I have been working in the vineyard of the Lord, starting with my husband, uh, Diem Kahoro, our five children, uh, two sons, Jage, the firstborn and the lastborn, Wanjao, and the daughters, Warao, Wagechi, and Murush, and also our grandchildren, Bobs and Ngedo. I really thank God for them because they really supported me in everything that I do. Uh, with that, I'll go to the message of the day. The message of the day will come from St. Mark, Mark chapter 11, and I'll read from verse 11 to verse 25. Jesus entered Jerusalem and went to the temple. He looked around at everything, but since it was already late, he went out to Bethany with the twelve. The next day, as they were leaving Bethany, Jesus was hungry. Seeing in the distance a fig tree in leaf, he went to find out if it had any fruit. When he reached it, he found nothing but leaves, because it was not the season for figs. Then he said to the tree, may no one ever eat fruit from you again. And his disciples heard him say it. On reaching Jerusalem, Jesus entered the temple area and began driving out those who were buying and selling there. He overturned the tables of the money changers and the benches of those selling doves and would not allow anyone to carry merchandise through the temple courts. And as he taught them, he said, is it not written, my house will be called a house of prayer for all nations, but you have made it a den of robbers. The chief priests and the teachers of the law heard this and began looking for a way to kill him, for they feared him because the whole crowd was amazed at his teaching. When evening came, they went out of the city. Verse 20, in the morning, as they went along, they saw the fig tree withered from the roots. Peter remembered and said to Jesus, Rabbi, look, the fig tree you cast has withered. Verse 22, have faith in God, Jesus answered. I tell you the truth, if anyone says to this mountain, go throw yourself to the sea, and does not doubt in his heart, but believes that what he says will happen, it will be done for him. Therefore, I tell you, 
whatever you ask in prayer, believe that you have received it and it will be yours. And when you start praying, if you hold anything against anyone, forgive him so that your Father in heaven may forgive your sins. May the name of the Lord be praised. Yeah, let us pray for the message. Our Father and our God, we come to you again, thanking you for your goodness and your mercies of our lives. Father in heaven, you have assembled us in our homes this evening so that we can listen to the message that you have. King of glory, I'm presenting myself just as a vessel so that you may use me. Through me, King of glory, Master, speak. Your servants are hearing. We are hearing, we are listening unto you, God in heaven. My prayer is that the words that you give unto me, I'll use them according to your will for glory and honor of your holy name. And we are praying this in Jesus Christ, who is our Lord and our Savior. Amen. Um, for the sermon that you have today, the title is The Tree. The title of the message today is The Tree. And the text that we have read today, it is during the last week of Jesus on this earth. The last week, other than verse 11, that was from the previous week, from verse 12, it is the beginning of the Holy Week, which is also called the Week of Passion. The Week of Passion. This week is very important in the Christian faith, in the Christian ministry, because if it were not for this week, the Christianity will not be there because this is the week that Christ suffered. This is the week that Christ was killed. This is the week that Christ died and was buried. And more to that, Christ resurrected. The death and the resurrection of Jesus, they are very crucial in the Christian faith. And as we can see, this text, we can actually divide it into three days. The first day, Jesus, verse 11, Jesus entered Jerusalem. He went to the temple. He observed. It was in the evening. It was at night. No activity. And he left with the 12. He had the 12 disciples with him. The second day, as he is going with the 12 from now Bethany, where he has spent the night, and he's moving to Jerusalem, it is in the morning. But Jesus is hungry. He wants to eat. And from far, he notices that fig tree with a lot of leaves on it. And he expects to get a fruit from the tree. But unfortunately, unfortunately, there is no fruit at all. This disappointed Jesus. He was frustrated. He is a hungry man. He wants to eat something, but there's nothing for him to eat. But since there's no tree, uh, there's no fruit from the tree, he used very strong words. He cursed the tree that let no one eat from you. It's a big curse for the fig tree. And he moves on. Christ moves on. He is on a mission. He goes to Jerusalem. He enters the temple. Again, Christ is frustrated. He's disappointed. What is happening in the temple of the Lord? It is the buying and the selling. It is the exchange of money from one currency to the other. It is the selling of the doves. Again, a furious Jesus entering the temple. He overturns the tables for the money changers. 
the benches that had the doves that were being sold, he overturned them. And after that kind of drama, the temple is quiet, no more selling and buying and the exchange of money. The time came for Christ to teach the ones who are in the temple. He goes straight to the book of Isaiah 56, chapter 7, and he reminded the ones who are busy in their business because of the fruit that he had. He was so annoyed, he told them, it's is it not written that my house will be called a house of prayer for all nations? My house shall be called the house of prayer for all nations. And you have made it into a den of robbers. These activities were happening in the open area in the open area of the temple, where, which was just reserved for the Gentiles. For the inner part of the temple, the innermost part is for the priests, for the sacrifices. The other one is for the Jews. But the Gentiles were expected to do their business in the open area and make the noise the mercy of from the doves and whatever that is reserved for the Gentiles. Jesus wanted to remind the attendance of the church when he read the scripture from Isaiah 56 that my house will be called the house of prayer is that his mission on this earth is not for the ones who are in the inner circles of the court. He has come for the Gentiles. He has come for everyone. But going back to the scripture, there are many times that I've read and I've not seen the relationship between this fig tree that Jesus has cast and the appearance of the temple that also Jesus overturned everything. What was the relationship? What lesson does Jesus want us to learn from this? First and foremost, when Jesus noticed the fig tree from far, it was green, leaves. He expected something out of it. There is nothing that is getting out of it. Jesus is going to the temple. Last night, the previous night he was in that temple. It was calm, there was no noise. A beautiful temple that has been constructed for the worship of God. So what is the relationship between these two? The fig tree without fruit. The temple colorful, but there is no worship that is taking place. It is what Jesus wants us to learn is that there is a lot of hypocrisy. The tree is acting as a hypocrite. The expectation is as I get there, there will be a fruit. It is not there. As I go to the temple, there is worship. It is not there. The expectation of Jesus was not met. For last today, if Jesus would come and expect fruit from us, will he get the fruit? Will, be he, dis will he be disappointed? Will Jesus say that no fruit, nobody will eat from us, if he cannot get a fruit from us. And this one thing that I would like us to remember, or I would like us to understand, the state of affairs, the, the way the fig tree was, the way the temple was, it was not unusual. It is, this was normal. Life has been the, had been like that. The temple had been like that. But Jesus has come with a new wave to change, to change the affairs. For example, for the temple in this open area of the temple, for years and years, and especially during the season of the Passover, 
the changing of money was always there because pilgrims would come from different countries or different states and they will come with their offering in their currency, then come over to this open area. And in the forex bureaus of that day, have the money exchanged so that they can make the offering to the church or uh, they will pay the temple tax. At the same time, the doves that were being sold, nothing unusual because doves have a lot of significance. The doves were used for the purification of women. You know how women were taken at that time. Purification of women at the same time for the healing of various skin diseases. At the same time, the poor people who would come to church, they would use, because they are poor, they have nothing else to offer. They would offer their doves. So there's nothing unusual. But the thing is, Christ has come to change. To change the old to the new. And he has come with a great force. His frustration shows the force that he has. And just one minute on the fig tree. The fig tree did not have a fruit. Nothing unusual. Because the Bible says it was not the season for fig tree fruits. It was not the season to have a fruit from a fig tree. It's not that Jesus was not aware, but it's a lesson that he wants these people to learn. He wants his 12. He is with the 12 disciples. He wants them to learn that a lot is expected from them in season and out of season. It is not the season for the fig fruit, but it doesn't matter. Our God is the creator of seasons. When he created the earth in Genesis chapter 1, he is the one who created the lights in heavens, the sun, the moon, so that they can differentiate the seasons, the hours, the days, the years. So God being the God of seasons, we should not have any limitation. We should not have any limitation in season and out of season. And uh, we have various Examples in the Bible where God acted as the Lord of seasons. We really do not have to tell God you have to do this. For example, in Genesis chapter 18, Sarah, the wife of Abraham, she was without a child for many years, many years. But a time came when God promised Abraham that the wife would bear a son. And Sarah from somewhere, she had. And she laughed over that. And, Jesus, and, and the Lord and God asked why. Had. And God promised Abraham that he will get a son. And in fact, God asked Abraham, is anything too hard for me? I am in control of everything. Getting a child in her old age, for me as God, is not a problem. All that you have is believe, believe, and it will happen to you. Luke chapter, uh, Luke chapter 1, Zechariah, the priest, uh, the father to John the Baptist, he was also old. It was at an old age, and he promised the angel, promised him that the wife would bear a son. He could not believe it. And in the same Luke chapter 1, we have Mary, the mother of Jesus. A very young girl who was promised that, or who was told by the angel that you will bear a son. She also doubted because she was not married. But there's a God of seasons. It really does not matter whether you are young or old. The Mary replied, may it be, as you have said, I am Mary surrendered, surrendered, Mary surrendered to the Lord. 
Um, on the third day, as Jesus was coming from Jerusalem, and the tree had withered, and what they noticed is that the tree had withered, the fig tree that Jesus had cast the previous day, it had withered to the roots, very serious. It had withered to the roots. What lesson do we learn from this? Withering from the roots means there is no hope. There is no hope in that tree. And finally, let's go to the tree. Genesis chapter 3. The first tree is the tree of knowledge, whereby Adam and Eve ate the fruit, and the tree was cast. The tree was cast. The serpent was cast. The earth was cast on which the tree grew. The soil was cast. And finally, we also have a tree. The tree, the tree, the final tree is this tree. The tree that had the lifeless body of Jesus Christ. It is the tree that supported Jesus. It is on that tree that Jesus died. And Jesus died to bring life to all of us. It is on that tree that Jesus himself became a curse so that the world will be saved. And that is why when Peter noticed that the tree had withered and he, the tree had withered, Jesus just told him, have faith with God. Believe that you can move mountains. And that is what we are being reminded today. That when we believe in this tree, when we believe in the one who hung on that tree, the mountains in our lives, we can move them. When the ground was cast in the original tree, the tree of knowledge, when the ground was cast and Jesus became the curse, so that the ground can be restored. All that we need is to have faith and to pray unto our God and remember to forgive the ones who have wronged us. Jesus has the power because he is the one who died and was buried and he rose again and he went to heaven. And in heaven, he became the judge. He will be the judge to judge us at the end. And may the name of the Lord be praised. Let us pray. Our Lord and our Father, again we come to you with us giving and praise. Thank you, Father, that you have directed us to the tree, the tree on which Christ was crucified on so that we can receive eternal life. Bless us, Lord. Let us be conscious, Father, that you are coming. Christ is coming again. And this time, as he comes back, he will come as a judge. Let's be prepared. Let's repent our sins because all that we need is to, is to repent our sins so that we can receive eternal life. We thank you. We honor you. And we bless your holy name. Praise in Jesus Christ, who is our Lord and our Savior.